as you know, when you're comparing rates and ratios, there are many ways to do the same problem. So I'm going to take a problem and I'm going to do it in several different ways so that you can compare what you know about rate and ratio to what can be done with a question. If you're making wa uh, orange juice from orange concentrate, such as you might get in a frozen juice can, you usually add some concentrate and you usually add some water. And it's the rate or ratio or proportion of water to orange which is going to um, give you the amount of orange flavor in your drink. So if you have a greater proportion of orange concentrate to water, if the orange, orange concentrate is greater, you're going to have a more orangey flavor. So we're going to take a look at four different recipes for orange juice made from orange concentrate and using a different proportion of water to orange concentrate in each one. So you can see that in recipe A you have two cups of orange concentrate to one cup of water and in recipe B you have one cup of orange concentrate to four cups of water and recipe C is four cups of orange concentrate to eight cups of water and recipe D is three cups of orange concentrate to five cups of water. Now you might be able to see right off the bat just looking at the fractions which one has the highest concentration of orange or which one is going to be the orangiest drink. But we're, I'm going to show you how you could prove it and how you could demonstrate which one is has the greatest amount of orange. So I've just rewritten these as ratios. So the ratio here represents orange concentrate to water. So the first term is orange concentrate, the second term is the amount of water. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change these to fractions and I'm going to try to find a common denominator for them so I can compare them. So in the case of A, my fraction is going to be two-thirds and here I'm going to have one-quarter here I'm going to have four eighths and here I'm going to have five or three fifths. So I'm going to try to find a common denominator. Now I'm going to change this just to make it easier. I know that four eighths is one half so that will ma maybe make it a little bit easier. So now when I look at the denominator I've got five and two and four and three. Now let's see if we can find a common denominator between those numbers. Well between four and three I know twelve is a common denominator and two would be have the same um, same factor. Two is also a factor of twelve. Now five isn't. So if all these three have twelve as a common multiple and I've got a, co a multiple or a denominator here as 5, I know that a common multiple between 5 and 12 is 60. So I can restate each one of these as a fraction using 60 as the denominator. So I multiply 3 times 20 to get 60, so I do that to the numerator as well. Here my denominator is 60, 4 times 15 is 60, so that I know my numerator has to be 15. 1 half expressed as a fraction over 60 would be 30 and here I've got 3 fifths expressed as a fraction over 60. I know that 5 times 12 is 60 so 3 times 12 is 36. So when I look at these fractions it becomes obvious to me that this fraction up here has the highest concentration of orange 40 is greater than 15, 30, or 36. So the ratio here is the greatest. So you know that one way to find and compare ratios is to change the ratio from a fraction to a fraction and then change the fraction so that they have a common denominator. That's one way of doing it. A second way to do that is to take the um, fraction that you created and make a, de a decimal out of it. So two-thirds as a decimal, 2 divided by 3, and that's repeated, and 1 quarter as a decimal, uh, 1 half or 4 eighths as a decimal, and to find the decimal, remember I just multiply or divide the um, denominator by the numerator. So 3 fifths, 
three, or sorry, the numerator by the de denominator, three divided by five is, again, I can see that this one has the largest amount of orange juice. So again, this is the orangiest one. So that time all I did is take my ratio, rewrite it as a fraction, and convert it to a decimal by dividing. So that one is the second method. The next thing I can try is to change my ratios so that one of the terms is the same. Let's say I want to change it so my second term is 1. So I want to convert this into a ratio that has something and 1 as the second term. So how did I get from 3 to 1? 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I would do 2 divided by 3 to find my second term and that's going to be decimal 6 repeating. And the same with this one here. If I want to write it something to 1, I know from, to get from 4 to 1 I have to divide by 4. So 1 divided by 4 is decimal 2, 5. So you can see that this has a lot of similarities to the last one we did. And 4 to 8, again, how do I get to 8? I divide by 4. Sorry, a divided by 8, 4 divided by 8 is decimal 5, and 3, how do I get from, whoops, from 5, sorry, let me get rid of that, that's not what I want, I want a 1 there, because I want all of the second terms to be 1. So I divided 5 by 5 to get 1, now I'm going to divide 3 by 5, 3 divided by 5, decimal 6. So this is very much like the uh, for one we did previously where we're changing them into decimals. And then the fourth thing that I can do is to change them so that they all have the same first term. So if I want the, that to be a 1, I had to take the 2 and divide it by 2. So now I have to take the 3 and divide it by 2. So 3 divided by 2 is 1 decimal 5. And let's, this already has 1 as the first term. And if I was going to have 1 as the first term here, I would have to divide 4 by 4. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. And if I want to have the 1 as the first term here, I have to divide, divide the first term by 3. I then have to divide the second term by 3. 5 divided by 3, as we already saw from previous is one decimal six. So for, from this you can see that the one that has the least amount of water, because remember water was our uh, second term here, the one that has the least amount of water is this one, so it's the orangiest. So I've shown four different methods for comparing the same set of ratios, finding the same uh, denominator, changing them to decimals, changing the first term to 1 and changing the second term to 1. And you can see how that they're very much related, but there are different ways of solving the same problem.